Hey guys, what's going on? Before we get started into this video, let me jump in here real quick and show you guys what exactly we're going to be talking about, just so you have a good understanding about what's going to be happening. Today I'm going to be talking about the Retaliation set. I did a video on the Frenzy set a few days ago, so if you haven't watched that, definitely check that out. But let me go down here and show you what the Retaliation set says. Grants the champion 35% chance to counterattack when attacked by an enemy. When counterattacking, the champion will always use their default skill, making this a good set for champions who default skill brings something useful to or unique to the table. Um, and a little bit of other extra information. And then it says when counterattacking, a champion's default skill will inflict 65% of its standard damage. So that's a little bit of an overview about the retaliation set. Now that you know what the set is, the set is farmable from the campaign, also from Ice Golems. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the video. But you got, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. And let me know what you think about the retaliation set. Are you going to be using it? Let me know after you finish watching the video. Hey guys, what's going on? Tyraku here. I hope everyone's doing great. Now, a few days ago, I made a video on a um, Fr Fury set. I mean, <laughs> Frenzy set. If you watch that video, um, you'll know that I called the Frenzy set the Fury set every single time. In this video, I'm going to get this set correct, okay? This is the retaliation set. Retaliation set. All right, I shouldn't have any problem remembering that. Now, the retaliation set specifically, uh, I'm going to jump into a little bit more where I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. But there's a few things about it and why I think it's not super popular. First off, um, you can get it from the campaign, which is awesome. This isn't a, this isn't why it's not popular, but from the dungeons, it's from the ice golem. And I'm not going to lie. I'm somebody who's bashed the ice golem plenty of times in the past. I thought Ice Golem wasn't very good, but I'm not going to lie. Honestly, after seeing what the Retaliation set can do with what little amount I have, I honestly think it could be one of the best, if not the best set in the game for this specific use. And I really think, especially if you're an early game player, well, honestly, I think after seeing this video, you may want to start farming Ice Golem. And you know, whenever they release these tournaments for dungeons, the Ice Golem always has the best rewards. Nobody farms it. And Plarium knows that. So they give like void shards at the top and everybody ends up just going up there and they kind of stop. But honestly, I'm going to start farming the Ice Golem. So let me show you guys a screenshot real quick. This screenshot was of my Clan Boss damage that I just now did on Ultra Nightmare, okay? Now I'm going to start a Clan Boss match with my Retaliation Gear. I'm going to show you guys what kind of damage it does there. Now... I'm gonna, after that, I'm going to go into kind of like other uses for retaliation that I think could be amazing. Obviously, this is budget unkillable team, and it may not be realistic for a lot of you players to have, but stay tuned because I think there's a ton of other amazing uses for retaliation set. I definitely think you're going to be interested in hearing. So 40.58 million damage. Now, that in and of itself is like, okay, well, okay, what's, what's the big deal? Let me show you what kind of gear these people are wearing, okay? So it's just regular gear, no retaliation set. They have plenty of accuracy for Ultra Nightmare, shooting for about 250 at least. They're at 100% crit rate. Um, it's just Vizier and Venus that I'll be changing in this video. The only people who really matter is the damage dealers. Now we have 3600 attack, 101% crit, and some decent crit damage. So I would say this is, um, in order to like stay very, very on speed tune at exactly 189, 188 speed about, you you gotta you're a little limited on the gear you can have, but this is what I have. Okay, I think it's definitely a solid amount of damage and crit rate. Obviously, it's 100. Now Venus, she's looking at same thing, 260 accuracy, almost 100 crit rate, um, missing 3, percent not a big deal. Uh, decent amount of attack and pretty good crit damage. So overall, I'd say that's definitely good gear, especially for the strict requirements that are set by Budget Unkillable. Now. Let me go in here, let me re-gear these people in retaliation gear, show you their stats, and I'm gonna jump into a clan boss battle and show you how that goes. All right guys, so I just finished up gearing, re-gearing actually, my Vizier and my Venus. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. As you recall earlier, she was about 97% um, crit rate, I believe, um, closer to 3000 attack, relatively similar crit damage, and about the same accuracy. I actually need to bump her accuracy up a little bit just to make sure she's actually landing the debuffs. That's the most important thing we have. We want to be about 250. That's the goal here. Um, we're at 220, so we're at 248 now. Let me see if I can just give a little bit more, because this isn't really the, uh, I'm not trying to test if they can land their debuffs or not. Like, I know that's going to be the thing. I want to see the overall damage being done. So we have the stats on Venus looking like this now, much lower, much, much lower than how it was before. Now up here at Vizier, let's see what he's looking like. He's looking at 
2500 attack, so very low. He does have 100% crit rate, only 150 crit damage. We'll go ahead and round that up. 253 accuracy, so same amount of accuracy. So obviously, without a doubt, significantly lower stats. 188 speed, Venus is at 189, I believe. So let me jump in here, guys, and show you how this clan boss match is going to play out. So the other one is typical. Um, you just, I have to, so the big difference that I've found, and if you use Vizier in your clan boss team, you'll know this difference as well. You have to auto so much, or not auto, you have to manual so much when you're using Vizier because he just doesn't extend anything. Like he'll, he'll just use his other abilities and nothing actually gets extended. And this is a perfect answer for that problem. You watch, counterattack from Venus. Hopefully we place some poisons. We get one poison placed. Not very much, but not a big deal. Now I did the same turn orders for this team as well as the other example. I used Vizier the entire time until I had full stacks of poisons, decreased defense, and weaken. No other debuff was applied to the clan boss. So if anything else gets applied here, perfect. I think it took me till about turn 12 to 14-ish before I could turn it on auto with that team. Let's see how quickly I can get it turned to auto with this team. On the, with the retaliation set on these on these two champions instead of having their regular gear we got a counterattack from vizier right there we got a counterattack from venus we got one more poison applied she's a little bit slow sometimes when applying poisons she has a chance to apply two it's a 50 percent chance per hit she is fully booked um if she was applying those a little bit quicker i've literally seen this get a full thing of poisons on turn four which is actually insane the so same thing hit her right through auto and then we're gonna get vizier to extend it again and then watch this, okay? So we're gonna get another counterattack, assumably, right? We have very solid chances to counterattack, and then Vizier extends, okay? So I'm gonna get this set up, and then I'll, I'll just jump to the end of the clan boss. Once we get the actual auto turned on, I'll just go ahead and jump to the end, show you guys how much damage there was done. Nobody really wants to sit through an entire clan boss run, right? It's kind of boring. Uh, nothing interesting is gonna happen. You're just gonna see a lot of these counterattacks, honestly. Once Vizier gets to about seven stacks total, I like to turn it on auto and it should be fine. Honestly, with this setup with retaliation gear, I could turn it on auto probably right now because every time the clan boss does his AOE abilities, Vizier's going to counterattack basically. He's either going to counterattack because of the mastery or because of the retaliation set. He got resisted actually, so his accuracy is a tiny bit low for this. I need to bump his accuracy up a little bit more, but apparently it's not a huge deal. That may have been an accuracy problem, or it could have just been the random chance to get resisted as well. That's definitely like a 3% chance, I think. So it's gonna happen. I'll go ahead and turn on auto right now. Um, if he can keep these counterattacks up, that should be perfect. Actually, no, I need, to, I need to get this a little bit more extended. Let's get it to about five turns, all right? About five turns of extension. So then I can comfortably turn on auto. Right, I, I hate turning on auto and then having to turn it on and off, on and off, on and off. And like I said, if you use Vizier, you're gonna know all about this issue. Four turns, that's fine. I'll turn on auto now, guys. So let's run this through. I'll be back at turn 49 or so to let you guys know and show you guys the damage that has been done. And we can compare and contrast which set may or may not be better. All right, guys, let me go ahead and jump back in here right before the clan boss match ends. I'm gonna click back on auto. I want to make sure it didn't actually finish the match. So let me pull up this screenshot that I had from earlier where it actually showed my damage that I did previously. So I did 40.58 million damage previously. Um, I had 41 million already on turn 49 with the relentless with the retaliation retaliation set. I knew I was gonna mess that up and I finally did. All right, so we have so far two million damage more. But I think we're gonna get even more than that. I mean, because we still have a few turns left, right? Let's go ahead and see how this finishes out. The team is dead now. Let's go ahead and take a look how this damage breaks down. So we have Faceless who did 5.5 million damage last time. So he actually got a little bit less damage this time. His gear wasn't touched, so remember that. We have Maneater, who did a little bit more damage, so they seem to balance each other out. We had Painkeeper, who did 100,000 damage more, not very much at all. And then we have Vizier, who ended up doing just barely less damage with about, well, about half a million damage less, about 500,000 less, five or 600,000. And we have Venus, who obviously had the jump with about three million damage more than the time before so in this like i said this time before same setup we had the poisons i think what happened was is it took longer to get the poisons fully built up with this team versus this team and there's definitely some room to improve on this the uh retaliation set team because we didn't even get poisons fully up on the bar until turn eight i think or so 
uh, which this one, I don't know exactly when the poisons got fully up on the bar, but it definitely took significantly longer because Venus sometimes lands one, sometimes she lands two. Now, the difference between these two gears, the difference between the gear between these two teams was what, 200% plus crit damage, at least 100% crit, crit rate, and then a decent amount of attack on the v Venus and Vizier. So this is my results from the retaliation set testing. I just wanted to bring this to your guys' attention because I was testing this, like I said, on stream last night and the damage done was actually insane to me. The damage done, I thought, especially for the amount of gear you need, I was thinking this could literally be game changing for a lot of clan boss teams. Now, I know I mentioned I was going to talk about some teams that you could possibly use this in because I know a lot of people are not going to have budget unkillable, right? So teams I think this would work amazing in are teams, well, if you had a budget unkillable, for example, take out Vizier and then throw in another Poisoner. So if I had Frozen Banshee in a retaliation set, it could work great because where Vizier extends the debuffs, Frozen Banshee would just help to actually keep the poisons up the whole time. So she could definitely work well with this team as well. Um, it would give you a lot more room to work champions into this team, especially if they have the most important thing is having the ability you want on their A1. So a champion like Faceless, while he's great in retaliation, if you can get him his stats where it's a good spot to be at, he's not going to be perfect because he doesn't bring anything other than a, a damage ability to his A1. Where Vizier brings ex damage extensions, he bring or debuff extensions, and Venus brings poisons. So your champion you bring has to have something good on their ability one. If not, you have Warmaster Proc, so it's still value, but you really want to make sure it's somebody who actually brings something good. So you have that. Um, now for other people, like if you're just early in the game, throw a retaliation set on your champions, and you're basically going to be having a counterattack team without actually having a counterattack champion. So. I know a lot of people struggle with getting Skull Crushers. They struggle with getting Valkyries and Martyrs. I mean, there's only three counterattack champions in the game. But there's literally a counterattack set built into the game, which if you're attacking, this is another big thing. If you're attacking during Affinity, so like anything other than Void, the Clan Boss hits twice for his AoE ability, and you'll have 35% chance, I believe, to counterattack each time he hits. So... That obviously greatly increases your chance of counterattacking versus if you're attacking Void. It does still work on Void. You're just not going to be getting as many counterattacks. So when you do this, you'll basically be having a team running counterattack without actually having a counterattack champion. So I honestly believe that the opportunity for this is massive. You could build very creative teams. I've already kind of been thinking about what I would do if I wanted to swap this out and not do budget unkillable, I'm going to be farming Ice Golem for a while to try to build up some better gear, specifically retaliation gear, to hopefully try to build a team that works similar to counterattack, but instead of having a counterattack champion, maybe throwing somebody in with Leech. It's like a Grush. Let me show you guys what he does. So Grush, let me just go ahead and check in here. He is He has a Leech on his A1, and then he has some heals as well. So if he was to throw a Grush into the team, he would be placing Leech. So it's essentially a counterattack. It's essentially a life steal set based on how much damage you get back whenever you deal damage with Leech. Very nice. It's a little less than life steal, about half. But whenever you're hitting with Warmaster, it's basically a full heal anyways. So if you have Leech on a champion, he has retaliation. You wouldn't necessarily need retaliation on him. But if you could build, instead of building a full team of champions with life steal gear on, you built a full team of champions with retaliation gear on, you're going to be essentially getting the benefits of a counterattack team. If you have a leech debuff, you're essentially getting the benefits of a counterattack team, life steal set, and overall you should do a lot more damage. But instead of having to have a life steal set, you'll just be having retaliation set. So it is going to be some more farming Ice Golem. And Ice Golem doesn't necessarily have as many beneficial sets as Dragon. Dragon does have more beneficial sets. Definitely can't argue that, but I do believe Ice Golem has significantly more weight, in my opinion, now. After seeing how good the retaliation set can be, especially with your champions being so far below the gear when running with a regular team. So this is literally about half the, oh well, not quite half the crit damage, but a significantly lower amount of crit damage than before. And the Venus, she had 60%. So she was, she was critting just over half the time. 
those extra turns were amazing and her attack very very low so once this gets optimized and once i get actually good retaliation gear on these champions i would definitely like to revisit this and show you guys what retaliation gear for unkillable is actually capable because honestly i think i can push 45 to 50 million damage which in my I, as far as i know that's on the very high end of budget unkillable with mostly all void champions so i don't know what the highest number the highest amount of damage done from budget unkillable team is but i would def i would assume that 45 to 50 million is definitely on that upper side of things so thank you guys very much for watching this video i hope this maybe opens up some ideas for you maybe you can start incorporating retaliation gear into your champions let me know are you going to start farming the ice golem i used to meme about it but i think it's actually a really good set i think the ice golem is definitely a place i'm gonna be farming and hey it has resistance gear so you can get a bigger pp player power that is what were you thinking all right and then reflex also very solid set with that said guys thank you all very much for watching i'll catch you in the next video feel free to click one of the videos that are about to pop up on the screen check out the stream which i'll be starting in just a few minutes a few hours but i believe about 30 minutes to an hour after this video is live see you guys there hope you have a great rest of your day